Hey friends and welcome to my channel, Jory with Jen. I'm Jen and I'm back with the techniques tutorial today for a chain link necklace. Now a chain link necklace, friends, if you're not familiar, is basically a necklace that we put together using only components and findings such as eye pins, head pins, craft wire, jump rings, and chain. Any of those, all of those, just some of those, or a combination of that. That is what we call a chain link necklace. I'll show you a quick example, one that I just made myself yesterday. Um, maybe I'll do one on video. This turned out absolutely stunning. Of course, as you guys know, my favorite color is blue, but this is a long rope. It's 38 inches, so it's a rope length. And it is in the same exact uh mixed metal of uh, the copper and rose gold and it's just absolutely stunning okay but this is what you call a chain link necklace so the only thing i used was i used my eye pins i used jump rings and chain throughout the entire necklace to put it all together okay so that's what we call a chain link necklace we're going to do the same thing here but we're going to do a different version of it and we're gonna make this um, smaller. So we'll maybe do around, I feel like around an 18 inch necklace is gonna be good, 18 to 20, with the way these are gonna dangle. So welcome aboard. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. And if you're interested in making a chain link project or looking for a little inspiration, then stay tuned, because that's what we're gonna jump into. So thank you guys one and all for joining me today. Okay, let's get into supplies. Supplies, guys, what you're going to need is you're going to need, if you want to do this exact technique, and you can put your own spin on this, I am using head pins, eye pins, jump rings, six millimeter rose gold jump rings, four millimeter chain, and it's in rose gold, and it's oval curb, oval flat curb chain. Use any chain you want, okay? So this is four millimeter. And then you're gonna use a ruler. And then of course, get your beads. I have a magnetic clasp in rose gold I'll use. So any clasp will work. And then our beads. I will tell you about my beads and um, uh, you can use any beads you want. Uh, and some daisy spacers. Now, the beads I'm using here are I have two sizes of the same bead. These blue and purple with the rose dust gold beads, they're frosted glass. I have them in four millimeter and eight millimeter. Okay, so I'm using the combination of those. I'm using the four millimeter across the top and along the bottom, we're using the four millimeter. And then I'm using two types of faceted crystal rondelles. One is in lavender, and then one is in a cobalt blue that I found in my stash with an AB finish. They are so cool, and they just match these beads beautifully, okay? So that's the three beads that I'm using, and I'm using the purple rondelles are going across the top, and the blue rondelles are going across the bottom. Now I mentioned head pins and eye pins. So for my beginners, because this is a techniques tutorial, this is a head pin, right? It's got a flat head on the bottom. And these are our eye pins. And eye pins come with that pre-loop already made on them. Okay? So the eye pins I'm using across the top. Okay? So across our focal. Those are be that will be our eye pins. And then our head pins are across the bottom for our little dangles, okay? And I'll pull those up and show you. So our little dangles on the bottom have the head pin on them, right, with the loop to connect it at the top, all along the bottom, and then across the top of the necklace, we're using all of the eye pins. And the eye pins already had one loop made for me, so I only had to make a one loop on the other side, and they are all exactly the same, okay? So then we'll use a ruler and then you'll need some cutters and some chain nose and then your choice of the one-step looper or round nose. Now let me stop right there and let you know what I've done. So I'm using my one-step looper because I just felt like it today and it makes it go faster. I also, because this is a much smaller necklace, it'll be more um, 
you know, up higher on the neck, 18-ish or so inches, I'm hoping. We might do 20 inches, but somewhere around there. But it's going to lay high up on the neck, um, higher up on the chest, rather. Um, and so, therefore, the whole necklace will be in focal, right? And I want my loops to be the same size all the way across, and I want them to be cohesive and consistent, okay? And although the one-step looper does not make a perfect loop every time, sometimes I have to close it. Um, I accomplish my goal, which I just explained to you, by using the one-step looper. The other reason is because I'm making quite a few and it went much faster. Okay, even though I have to tweak them, it does the job and gets it going much faster. Now, if you want to use your round nose pliers, then just make your simple loops with your round nose pliers. Now, I'll stop right there and put a, um, for my beginners, I will put a link in the video box uh, description below the video. I have a playlist up that is called Jewelry 101 Basics for Beginners, and in that playlist, I have several videos. I have Making a Simple Loop, I have Five Ways to Make a Simple Loop, I have Working with Head Pins and Eye Pins, and I have a video up on a full demonstration on the One Step Looper. So if you need a deeper dive, um, I'll put a link in the box uh, for that, th that playlist for you, and maybe... Um, if you've got some spare time and you're interested to do a deeper dive and really seeing a close-up um, on how to do all these loops to make these components to do a design like this, you might find those videos helpful. I did leave a couple that we need to make together, so you will see me make a few here in a second. And then the other thing that I did to expedite the video besides making the majority of my components is I also opened up all my jump rings because I know we're gonna to have to open them to get them put together. I did not cut my chain link because we need to put this together first in order to determine what size um, to cut our chain for the desired length we have. So I have my ruler. I also have my tape measure over here. Um, either one will work, but I'll put that to the side right now. And that's just my little scraps, okay? And then I think I told you we need a clasp and any clasp will do. So guys, Let's just do a quick summation before we jump into this because it won't take us long. So in order to do, this is a techniques tutorial, in order to do a chain link necklace like this where you have the little dangles in between, you can use any beads and you can use jump rings or not. You can put chain between or not. You can connect these directly to each other just like that. You can literally connect every eye pin together, right? Because we can open the eye pins. We can open up our loops and we can connect them together. So this is definitely a modifiable uh, type of technique. So I'm not going to put a list of supplies in the box like I just said. I'm just going to put a list of your components. And, and that's for that very reason. Because you can use whatever you want. But I will put the list of the components that you need in the box for you. And then you can just um, play around with it and kind of make it your own. So as you can see, this is basically my design. So this is what's going to be going across. Um, and then underneath, in between each link that I have of my purple up top here, I'm putting um, the little ones I put together with the four millimeters on the head pens. I'm putting those in between each loop. Okay. So and I've got an extra one made there, so we'll see what else we need to make. Now, I know that we need to make at least two more. Um, I think, well, let's do one, and then let's see kind of how, what our length turns out to be. So let's do one more of our going across here, and then I want to get it put together with our jump rings, and then we'll put it on the tape measure and see what we where we're at for sizing. Um, so I'm going to take my eye pen and then I'm just doing whatever pattern I want. Um, so my pattern is pretty consistent. So it's a rondelle and then a daisy spacer, the eight millimeter bead daisy spacer and the rondelle. Okay. So very simple pattern, but it looks really pretty all the way across the top. So I'll do one more here and let's then we'll just start putting it together and let's see what our sizing is. And if we need to make any more, then we've got some more supplies and sitting out here 
and we can do just that. Okay, so there is my pattern, my beads sitting on my eye pen, and then I will just put that in my one-step looper, and I'm just making sure that is flush right here, my bead, and then we're just gonna give it a squeeze, and just makes our loop for us. And for some reason, I need to probably put some oil or something on mine. Mine, um, this doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes you have to kind of wiggle it out like you just saw me do. But just that quick, we have a loop. And as you can see, it did not close my loop completely. So that's a super easy fix because the looper does, you know, the majority of the labor for me. <laughs> so no problem at all for me to just take my round nose pliers, go in there, and then just tuck that loop in a little bit more. Just pull it around a little more to where that's nice and closed. And there we go. Make sure we're even and it's done. Okay, just like that. Super, super simple. And let me see. So we have this laid out correctly like this. Okay, so now to put this together, guys, I, like I said, to save time, I've already got a bunch of jump rings open. So let's go ahead and just grab a pair, a uh, couple pair of chain nose pliers here. And we will grab our first component and a jump ring. And we're going to put that on the first component. And we are going to grab the second component at the same time and put that right on there like that, okay? And then we're going to close it. We'll worry about putting the bottoms on after. So we'll open and close our jump ring several times, but that's okay. That's, this is just, I think, the easiest way to do it because I feel like the easiest way to do it is let's just get our top put together first, okay? So, because we can, like I said, we can either reopen the jump ring to put this bottom component on, or we can open up the loop, which is probably what we'll do on this component to feed that on the bottom. But let's just go ahead and focus on getting our top together. So every time I open up a jump ring and I feed on my component, I can literally feed on, I'm feeding on two. Okay. Okay. And then when we close our jump rings, guys, let's make sure that our jump rings are nice and secure, nice and flat. We don't want anything falling out, okay? And let's see here. I was wanting to try to put them on the same. I guess it doesn't really matter. Well, I guess it kind of does because now that I'm looking at it, I want to make a quick modification, which is turning all of my loops the same direction. You have seen me, if you watch my channel, do this in previous videos. All you do is grab your chain nose pliers and put them on either side of the loops on your component to get them going the same direction. And I just realized that I didn't do that, so I'm going to do that now before we go any further. So those are good. I just want them facing all the same direction. And again, this is just an aesthetic issue. This has nothing to do with the design, um, the physical, excuse me, the actual technique. Nothing. This is just simply a design aesthetic to my eye. I'm just wanting everything to kind of face the same direction. It's that simple. And I see that one. I need to turn that one around. I'm also wanting all of my loops to face the same direction. So now I need to be mindful of that as well. And again, this is just me being picky <laughs> um, because it looks it looks fine anyway. But I'm just wanting all of my loops to go the same direction. Okay. So now we'll pick up another jump ring. Oh, you know what? Let me go ahead and straighten out my loops on the rest of all of my components. So again, guys, all you do is you're just kind of putting your hand, your pliers towards the table and just turning them, pivoting your pliers over your loops, and then they end up being the same direction. That's all I'm doing there. So let's just do that with the rest of these few guys here. Okay. 
most of them actually might have just been those first couple are the same direction that one's good might have just been those couple those first few okay okay i think we're solid as a rock okay so back to what we're doing so the next component we're just simply feeding on a jump ring um and adding a component that's it's that simple this is not difficult very easy um, techniques tutorial here um, putting together a chain link and again it's not even that time consuming if you're using like the one-step looper it does not take that long and so this is what's starting to happen okay and so we'll grab another jump ring and we'll feed that on that last the loop of that last component and then We'll put this next one on. Just making sure my loops are all going the same right direction here. And then we'll close up that jump ring. When you're closing your jump rings, you know, just wiggle them by applying pressure towards the center to put them together. Just don't want any openings on your jump rings. Okay, and now we'll put that on there, and then uh, that guy goes on there. And also, you can use any kind of jump rings, guys. Um, you could, I could have probably used my four millimeter, but my these six millimeter are a twenty gauge, so they're a little thicker, and. I don't know, just for good measure. I thought I'd use a little thicker jump ring, so. But you can probably, and you can use even larger, you know, you certainly could use um, eight millimeter if you if you felt like it. You can use, you know, like I said, this is, I'm just showing you a technique um, and some design inspiration. You can modify all of these supplies. Once you get the technique down, you know what you're doing, you can totally modify all your supplies. But what's also cool about this, like I said, I don't know if I mentioned this, I think I did, is um, I am once again trying to stay in trend and going with um, mixed metals. So all of my jump rings, the daisy spacers, and the chain and the clasp is all rose gold. And then um, all of these eye pens are, are copper. And so it's subtle, you know, so it's not really, you know, very pronounced. It's kind of subtle. Um, and it just, you know, the elements of the copper and the rose gold, they look really pretty together. So it, it's it's subtle enough to where it doesn't look like it's tarnished or, you know, it looks intentional. So that's what we have, guys. Okay. I'll pull that up and show you. That's what we have. Okay. So now let me measure that really quick and see. So that right there is nine and a half inches, okay? So, let me get these little guys moved over here. So what I'm thinking is that it's really just a matter of me wanting to have this as the draping, you know, obviously focal around the neck. And so it's just really a matter of me figuring out how much chain do I want to show and how long would I like this necklace to be. So if I stop it right here, I think that, you know, that might be good. That, that really, that might be good. I think that too much more is going to be too much. So let's go ahead and get our little dangles fed on and for that what we're going to do guys the easy way is to open up your eye pins the loops on your head pins excuse me and we're going to feed those on the loops in between and so in order to do that we're just going to open up that loop and now i want all these loops to be facing the back so i am going to be mindful i'm going to put them 
right, and I'm going to feed it right on the jump ring. So we'll be mindful that we're feeding these on the same direction. Okay, and then we'll close up those loops again, making sure that they're nice and closed. And if they're bent a little bit, which tends to happen very commonly with head pins and eye pins, no problem, just like I'm doing, just take your finger with your pliers holding that loop, straighten it out a little bit, and you're fine. Okay? And so that's what we have. Okay? So I just want to make sure my loops are going to be facing the back of this whole thing. So just be paying attention here, what I'm doing. <laughs> um, each little jump ring. So that's to the back. So now, let's see if I put this on. That way that should be to the back. Sometimes I get confused even by looking at it like, okay, which is this front? What is the back? Let me see what just happened here. Did it work? Yes. Okay. So those are both facing. Let me get that the right direction. No. See what just happened? Oh, see the mistake that I just made? I fed the loop on top, not on the bottom. Ha ha. Well, see? Now there you go. See? You got to you gotta make sure you're also feeding it on the bottom <laughs> between the other two components. So I need to be making sure that I am putting this loop on below the other components, not above it. You saw what just happened there, right? So now we'll fix it. And yeah. So we want to be making sure that when we're feeding on these little bottom components, we're feeding them on the bottom portion of this loop, not the top. Ha ha. <laughs> I caught you. I caught you, Jen, before you got all the way down. <laughs> so when you're picking it up, I suppose just maybe just hold your component and like kind of like right there. And then, like, feed your loop on it, on your jump ring. And that way, at least you know that your components are at the top. I hope you can see what I'm doing there. I'm trying to kind of pull up to the camera to show you. Not hard. It's not hard. Sounds harder than what it is, but... Okay, and then, again, just making sure that... All of my loops are facing the back. And next. So we'll pick that up there. And closing up our loop. It's just the same repetitive process throughout, guys. So a little bit of silence throughout some sections of this video, just because it's I'm doing the exact same thing every section. And again, sometimes, you know, they're a little bit bent, eye pins and head pins, you know, they're much um, more malleable. So they tend to get bent, which is a super easy fix. So let's see, just got a couple more here. Then we'll cut our chain and see what we've got. So we just open our little loops up, make sure they're all facing to the back, and we just grab the jump ring, slide it on there, 
and close up the loop. It's good to use um, something, a pair of pliers like this um, that has maybe like a slight bend in them um, just because it's such a, you're working with such a small area there. Um, it just, you can just get, make sure you can get right in there. And get to where you need to work. Okay, do I have everything on the correct direction, the correct way? Let me just double check myself here. What's happening? What happened here? Something happened again. What the world? How did that happen? Okay, there we go. I was like, wait a minute. Okay, you're all hanging correctly. Okay, one more right here. And then our ends, we will use some jump rings to go ahead and connect that chain. Okay, so this is what we have now, guys. And lay correctly. There we go. Okay, so now this is what we have. Okay. So, uh oh, what happened here? Oh, there you go. I'm like, wait a minute. Did I just do something completely <laughs> random? Okay. So this is what we have. So really, really cool. This is what it's going to look like. It's just really, really sweet. And it's really easy to make, actually. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we need to go ahead and kind of put this together and put it flush up here at the top. Okay, and we this is where we need to determine how, uh, what size to cut, how much of our chain to cut, what size we want our necklace to be. So right now, I'm just kind of measuring from the bottom here. Um, I am at four and a half, so that is nine. So. If I put this to the nine, this chain to the nine, then that would be an 18 inch necklace. And I feel like that's actually a really good size. If I'm telling you the truth, I think that this is going to look really good at an 18, at an 18 inch. I actually do. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, this is the important part when you're cutting your chain because your jump ring is gonna add sizing, right? So what I do in a case like this, instead of just, you know, putting it up against our measuring tape and chopping it, you know, cutting it at the nine, let's go one step further for good sizing and let's go ahead and put on a jump ring because that is gonna add some length. So we're gonna feed the last link of our chain on the jump ring and now I am gonna feed the jump ring on my last connector and then I'll close that jump ring up. Okay. And now I can cut my chain. And then we can use this as the guide to cut the other side. So again, I am going to put my um, ends together here, my eye pins. So basically my eye pins I have lined up. I have my tape measure down here at the very bottom of my bend. So that's at my zero. And then now I've got my chain on. And so what I'll do is I'll lay my chain out here. 
and I like to lay my chain flat when I'm cutting it, guys. It will twist. Um, this curb chain will twist on the body and it's natural movement, which is totally fine. But when I'm finishing it off, I would recommend go ahead and lay your chain flat because it's just going to make sure your measurements and everything are good and it's just, it, it, it's a much cleaner look. Um, also, just when it's laying on the mannequin or laying, in, you know, on your in your jewelry display or whatever, you know, it's not going to lay all twisted. So, at any rate, a little tip there. So, again, my zero, guys, is right there at the head pin of my last component here. And so, there's my zero. And then I have this laying right up against... My measuring tape we've got our jump ring and our chain already connected to our last component and all I'm gonna do is I'll grab my heavier duty cutters and I will cut this chain at the nine okay so I'll cut it right there at the nine And now we can grab a jump ring, put that on the last link of our chain, and we can feed our clasp on. And the clasp also is going to add about half of an inch with that jump ring, maybe three quarters of an inch. So maybe it'll end up being, you know, 18 and a half. I'll do a final measurement for you. Okay, so now in order to cut the correct length of chain on the other side, we'll repeat exactly what we just did. And what we just did was we put a jump ring on the last link of our chain. So we'll go ahead and just feed that on the last link of your chain. And now we'll feed that on our last component on the other side here and then we'll go ahead and let's close that jump ring up nice and secure perfect okay and now same thing and what we're gonna do is how about that for a second what you now do guys is to just go ahead and lay this out completely straight and now you'll take this side and you will just go ahead and match up our jump rings that we just added right there. Okay, so I can see that those are even. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the top link here and I'm going to cut my chain right across from it. So that's what I'm doing. So that would be right there. And then we will grab a jump ring. And same thing, I always lay my chain out flat when I'm finishing it. So I lay my chain out flat, grab my jump ring, and then I will feed on the last link of that chain and the other side of my toggle. Just like that, we'll close up that jump ring and we're all done and we'll see what we have. I'll put it on the mannequin and we'll do a measurement. Just get this stuff out of our way. Okay. So what we have, guys, is, we can lay it out flat actually. So what we have, is a with the clasp we wound up with a 19 inch necklace so there you go so the two jump rings and the clasp added an inch actually so perfect because we cut our chain at 18 inches and a nice super easy magnetic clasp and then let me grab the mannequin here and show you guys what we wound up with. 
This one is so pretty. But let me get it out of the way. <laughs> so what we wound up with is, this is what it looks like. They're a pretty little magnetic clasp. It's very minimalist, but oh, is that darling. Very, very, very cute. And we put it over a little mannequin here. And let me adjust you up so you can see what we got going on. And there is what we have. Get that straight. And that's what we have. Isn't that pretty? And what's kind of cool about a look like this is, you know, it'll hang just a smidge wider. This is my longer uh, mannequin, but it'll hang just a little bit wider. But what's really cool is that these little links that we put um, on the head pins in between, um, you know, they just lay so cool. Look how cool they lay on the sides. And then this one winds up being, you know, right there in the center. And then these just lay really cool on the sides like that. So that really is just absolutely beautiful. Really, really pretty, pretty design. And anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. So really super beginner friendly techniques tutorial. Anybody can do this. You guys can use any kind of beads that you want, any kind of components and it's it doesn't take long, maybe 30 minutes, right, to make something, you know, so beautiful like that. And it's very, very minimalist as well. I don't feel like it's too loud. So it kind of lends itself to a little bit of minimalism. But that's a beautiful palette of color also for spring and summer. Love, love, love. I'm loving all that purple and that blue. It looks so pretty in the mixed metal. It's just divine. Just divine. Love it. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Happy um, Sunday to everybody. And until next time, friends, be blessed.